This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now room. be recorded. Sorry, yeah, okay. So myself, Sri. So working in SAP domain from past 12 years uh, and uh, coming to this EWM experience, uh, well, I'm almost having seven plus years of only in this EWM experience as working as an MMWM and then moved on into EWM. So from so past seven years working into multiple projects like implementations for rollouts and upgradations. So currently based out of in Netherlands. So working for an automobile industry as of now. So this is what my background in short. Okay. Right. So before we okay. directly jump. Yeah. So before I directly jump into this particular AWM thing and 1909 basically would like to just give you an overview. What is an EWM and why do we still using like why are we using this EWM though we have a warehouse management in WM side, I mean like from the ERP side, we do have a WM, which is a warehouse management. Now we are calling it as a stockroom management from after 2020 or whatever. But still, why are we using this EWM and so many customers who have been implementing this and what is the reason behind this and all, okay? So basically, what is the main purpose of having a warehouse solution? Anything, whether it could be a SAP WM or EWM or Manhattan or Red Perry, whatever it could be. What could be the basic uh, idea behind using this particular uh, uh, warehouse solution? It's just pick, pack and ship. All right, so just picking, packing and shipping or any other purpose for that? 
uh, that's the basic uh, thing all uh, all the warehouse management has okay and with this AUDW implementation uh, you can also have the insight of your in-house warehouse inside warehouse and uh, like outside warehouse also which is uh, uh, what you can say the yard management kind of thing which is not possible mm, okay. uh, okay. so any of the warehouse basically we will be doing pick pack and shipping ones but ideally the main purpose of having the warehouse solutions is to have a precise location in order to find out a precise location for our product on top of it in order to use this ewm yes agreed that comparing to other uh, wms solutions whatever we have it in the market ewm is much flexible in order to use with our SP, sap ones in, in terms of the configurations or in terms of the connections or in terms of the uh, uh, whatever we have the connections for the integrating with the SAP systems so that's the reason we'll be using this particular one but ideally in any of the wms solutions the main reason behind of using a for warehouse management is to find out or to have a precise location for our products that's the main uh, intention behind it on top of it in order to have the tracking of your products and in order to have the traceability of where exactly the products have been in your warehouse so all these things comes into the picture whenever we are talking about any of your warehouse management solutions basically okay so in precise when we are talking about an extended warehouse management yes we have a lot of uh, functionalities when we compare with the warehouse management in ERP and this particular uh, extended warehouse management. So when I'm talking about this particular extended warehouse management, so from where did it start and how does, what are the changes has been evolved since from the past few years and what are the changes we had and what are the versions we had? So that's what uh, I would like to give you an overview and then I'll try to jump into the differences between that and then I'll try to show you what we are trying to have it in the sessions and how are we going to plan it. So that's what my intention of this demo is. Okay. Now I have divided this particular demo into few sections like one is about the systems integrations and the other one is about the master data integration, delivery documents integrations and warehouse integration and the process integration basically okay so ideally when i'm talking about all these things what is the systems integration master data integrations and all so first let me get into the systems integration when we are talking about this particular ewm landscape we are having earlier we don't have this embedded uh, landscape in place okay we used to have a cm server and that particular SEM server will be connecting to the ERP system, basically. And we used to connect it like whole SEM in the sense like we used to have your AWM in place and we used to have your transportation management and used to have your event management and then APO. So all these things used to come into the picture when we are talking about an SEM box. So later, that was the time when we are using the seven point. Let's just to go on mute if someone is not talking to us. I think I don't have that option. To yeah, yeah. There, there is some humming voice coming. Yeah, if, if somebody not using. Yes, it, please. Yes. If someone is not thanks, talking, thanks. request to go on mute, please. If you're having any questions, you can unmute and you can talk. I'll wait for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Now it's better. So what is uh, this SCM? Is this is a whole kind of a component where we used to have earlier. This is from the version of a 7.0 I was talking about. Okay. So that point of time, we used to connect our ERP which is our standard regular ERP systems where what we are using it from ages that we used to connect it to you through your SEM box. So where we used to have your TM, EWM, event management, APO and all these things used to come into this instance. Later on, when we are talking about a 9.0 version, which is that point of time, EWM has become a standalone. Only EWM itself can integrate with ERP systems or with non-ERP systems also okay that is the one other thing which we are trying to use which is nothing but ewm as a standalone after that since from 2016 i can say that we are using something called as an uh, s4 where this s4 has come into the picture where we are trying to use both wm and as well as ewm in one instance basically so that is the one where we started with 16, 10, 
okay that was the version which we started with the 1610 and after that okay we <clears throat> uh, integrate i mean like after that it was uh, started with 1610 followed by 1709 1809 and now it is 1909 so these are the different different versions what we had it in the earlier ones but ideally even in the present market we are having two different instances i mean like two different systems one is about a decentralized system the other one is about your uh, embedded systems so embedded system is the one where we, you will have all your wm and ewm in a single instance decentralized is the system where you will have ewm in a different server erp in a different server so that in the decentralized version the latest one is about 9.6 which is yet to come and 9.5 is the present one which is running in the market and 9.6 is also there so when i'm talking about a decentralized one it is a completely a different set of configurations and different but ideally the processes whatever we were using in the decentralized and as well as in the embedded both were same there is no change in that okay so but ideally the systems integration has been made simplified depending upon the business okay if the business is using something or the other if they want to have everything in a one single instance then people can go for uh, embedded ones i see someone are using 1709 this it and uh, where we have both ewm and tm also in one instance in 16 then we don't have tm in one instance from 1709 this has come into the picture after that we have 1809 followed by 1909 so ideally always remember that we are always dealing with two different instances in the market with sap one one will be about your decentralized one the other one would be about your embedded one is that clear or any questions for me here Hello? yeah it's clear Shiram. yeah <clears throat> thanks yep yeah. so that uh, is sorry, I, I have a question here uh, but mm. in the in the current in the current time uh, or currently mm. what is the 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 more usual uh, way to implement in 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 the client in the customers because i understand these these alternatives available in uh, in 2606 uh, uh, are not available anymore or yeah the the, the customer can implement uh, these alternatives uh, in the current time uh, I mean, like, uh, you're talking about which one is the ideal solution to implement for the customers? Yeah, in, in the current time, uh, or, or for now, what is the more usual way to implement? Uh, the, uh, according with this slide, is in the the the, the um, diagrams that you are showing in the middle of the slide, or uh, also the customer can implement uh the alternatives in the in the that you are showing in in, in the top uh slide in the top uh part of the slide it depends see it's not that's a reason ewm has given you an option of integrating with the embedded one and with the decentralized one okay so it's all about the cost and it all about the things which comes into the matter here it's not something see one thing is for sure if in case even SAP is suggesting that till 1809. If in case, if your warehouse business and if your warehouse volume and your operations are too big and it's too, I mean like the volume and the operations are too big to handle, then SAP is suggesting to use a decentralized one. The very first thing, if in case, if the warehouse management solution is too, I mean like the operations are too small, it's limited to only to one warehouse and your operations and all are very less, then it is suggesting to go your head with your embedded one but that is still 1809 but when it comes to 1909 we do have that option of enabling the embedded as a decentralized one also so it all depends upon the business how they want to go ahead basically why because if you are trying to go ahead with a decentralized one the systems configuration will be a bit more and it would be a bit kind of a complex why because the master data and the transactional data will be more high Okay, hello thank you yeah but when it comes to an embedded system the master data and the transactional data will be less why because it is in the same system i'll tell you why i'm uh, pointing out to, to this particular one why because in the decentralized systems 
the master data transfer which is not a, which we'll call it as a core interface is not required basically okay but when it comes to an embedded systems it is required i'm sorry i'm sorry it's my mistake it's another way around in embedded systems it is not required and in decentralized systems it is required okay that is the reason so it all depends upon their business the very first thing but ideally sap was suggesting earlier like if the volume of the operations of the warehouse are too big then go ahead with the decentralized one and if the volume of the operations is too less then we'll be going with the embedded one so ideally if the client is already having an embedded systems of 1709 or 1809 or 1609 whatever it is then there is no point of asking them to go ahead again with a decentralized one as being we already have the basic wm of the ewm will come with that particular package only thing is they have to pay an extra license for that and they have to enable the advanced features whatever like this replenishment or the yard management or the dock appointment scheduling or the production integration all these things has they have to pay for an extra license and they can they can make use of that futures you're getting my point now uh shiram on from yeah you're you're right and uh, yeah. if my if the warehouse is high volume high uh, you know frequency yeah. then yes. it is recommended to have a separate but the thing is how would you mm. how would you convince the client that you have to pay mm. extra fee even if i have uh, paid so much for the s4 hana latest version how we mm. will convince him that is that is okay. a big challenge one second uh, if you are paying an extra in the sense when you are paying for 1609 or 1709 or 1809 so it is coming with the all it, ewm and whatever tm as well okay you will be not coming with all the features there okay when it come to specific with the ewm one only the basic warehouse management only will work out for you if in case if you want to make use of the complete features of the ewm you have to pay for an extra for that and then you have to make use of it okay, only okay. the basic you, you don't need is, you don't need a separate yeah. system or separate server or no separate need. no need if though it's a see if in case if the client is already using a kind of an embedded systems for their business mm-hmm. and if you want to go ahead with an tm or an ewm the basic warehousing will be you, you can make use of it but okay, okay. if in case if you want to make use of an advanced futures for your business mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. that point of time you have to pay for that that's what i was trying okay. to point okay. out so okay. so it means it means that services mm-hmm. which you are turning on for the mm-hmm. advanced version that you have to inform exactly. to the sap that obviously you have to get it mm-hmm. make it done okay? okay the basic one in the ewm side it will work out for you okay so the first room does the replacement mm-hmm. cost doc uh, all those comes mm-hmm. under the basic one no no so basic one it's only like simple inbound and simple outbound all these things comes into the picture but the advanced ones like you can say that the yard management and the cross talking all these things goes under the advanced functionalities actually okay for that we do we need to pay additionally oh. for to get that oh yes it would not be enabled because you do have the option over there actually okay okay yeah okay any other questions believe, uh, yeah shiram there will be some notes like you yeah. know like which functions are uh, included into the license if you are using the basic tm or ewn and which are you have to pay extra i believe there will be some oss notes or something no? you talking about some kind of an uh, uh, OSS like which, which feature which features if say like for example out of 10 only 4 i have to mm. pay if i am activating those services oh, that uh, six we, i can we have to check with the licensing part because i was not aware of it like what will be uh, getting with that okay okay no no problem is not that that important just out of mind yeah okay thanks so okay. yeah it would be good if you can get that because i think uh, Oh, it is not important at this point of time for the training but i think for the client prospective time i think it should be helping us okay that i'll check it that's not a big thing yeah. but ideally because we will not be uh, dealing with that so i didn't focus on that but i'll get it make it for you okay yeah if somebody is on the position of like solution architect or somebody who can decide the mm-hmm. the architecture then it may be helpful for him or her okay so any other questions Hey, 
Yeah, tell me, please, Anton. Uh, yeah, uh, Shiram. Um, uh, as as this is 1909, um, honestly, I thought it was 1701, but it's okay. It's good to have the latest uh, model updated. But the thing is, if you see in in field or even my client or most of the client, they will never go for the latest version release. As a thumb rule, mm-hmm. it always minus one. So like, always if it is thumb rule, <clears throat> we will not go for the latest one because of the patches or whatever it is, because it's not stable solution till date. So as of exactly. now, the stable one is we can say it as 1809. It's it's exactly. a kind of a exactly. one. yeah. Exactly. So right. my question yeah. was, my question yeah. was, will yeah. will this 1909 inherited all the functionality of 1809, 1709, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. plus plus yeah. only say like 10 percent, which is additional. Mm-hmm. So we will cover all the 100 percent of including like 1610 and 1909. Yes. Yeah. You see, ideally, every future or every whatever uh, version really? it is going to exist every year, what happens is it's going to update a new functionalities. It, it, it's not about a complete functionalities. They're going to mm-hmm. add some new Fury apps or they're going to okay, add okay. some new screens or they're going to yeah, add okay. some new enhancements. That's it. Apart from that, the complete functionality wise will remain the same. The core functionality, whatever we have. Ideally, mm-hmm. every release, what SAP will do is they will try to add some core um, Oh, sorry, uh, the uh, Fury app screens, or maybe mm-hmm. they'll try to have some extra features or whatever it is. Okay, so that's what they try to do basically. Apart from that, the core functionality will remain the same whether you go for a decentralized one or whether you go for an embedded one. That will never get changed. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, because uh, from seventeen. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you the differences later on. Not now. Okay, is that clear now? So I can just move into the master data integrations and other part now. So the systems integration was clear. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So now, well, uh, before I move into this uh, overview one, actually, so okay, this is how the systems integration works in the system. Now, when I was talking about the master data integrations, okay, so earlier when still not even earlier even now if in case if the business is trying to make use of the decentralized versions then ideally we will be using the core interface like what is this core interface ideally the master data like what could be the master data for us it could be your plant or it could be your customer or it could be your vendor or it could be your customer master or your material master all these things so ideally ewm is a system where it is dependent on another system ideally why because it does it is only an execution part it is not a planning system basically okay so the master data and all it has to relay on and some other systems basically so what happens here is all the master data whatever we were creating it in the erp system the same master data need to be replicated to the ewm system in order to make it in sync why because in order to have our transactional data to be in sync the very first thing so in order to have that particular master data in sync we are using some tools the standard the tools what sap had out of that which is nothing but a core interface basically okay this is the same thing which will be used even by apo and as well as you know the tm guys as well so this core interface what happens is it will transfer your master data such as your plant your shipping point your customers and your vendors and everything to our ewm system so in the embedded systems basically this core interface has been eliminated as being we were in the same instance so this core interface is no more required in the embedded systems but still we will be requiring this in the decentralized systems basically getting it so this is one of the difference of the decentralized and the embedded systems okay clear hello yes yeah 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 this is one of the differences what i want to say and apart from that Okay, earlier we used to have customer and the vendor and then once we transfer this to the EWM system, we used to call it as a business partners. But now the same terminology has been moved out to S4 systems completely and we are calling it as a business partner now completely. Okay, that is one thing. Apart from that, the major difference comes over here now. Any of the transactional flow, basically what happens in the EWM system is we are trying to make use of two things here. One is in ERP and EWM still. But as I said, that EWM is just 
an execution system. It's not about any of the planning systems here. So what happens whenever we create any of our purchase order, okay, against a purchase order, we will create one inbound delivery. So, okay, major of the warehouse operations lies in three different things. Let's always remember, one is about your inbound operations. The second one is about your outbound operations. The third one is about your internal operations. Okay, so these are the three things which we always discuss going forward. So in order to have this particular operations to be succeeded in the EWM system, there should be some data has to be flowed to the EWM. So what kind of data was that? There should be some transaction flow has to be happened. So in order to have that particular transaction flow, what is the origin? ECC is our origin system basically. So in order to have that particular thing in place, always, we will be creating, if in case, inbound in the sense, the place where we'll be receiving the goods into our warehouse, outbound in the sense where we'll be sending out the goods out of a warehouse. So however, once we have a purchase order, we will create one inbound delivery. Again, as that inbound delivery, we'll have an inbound, sorry, we'll have an inbound delivery notification and against that notification will have an inbound. This is a standard flow, which we are using it in our embedded i mean like you know decentralized systems basically the same way when we are using this particular in the s4 system the notification was been completely removed okay so what does that mean that notification is nothing but it's the duplication of our inbound delivery here you're getting my point so in the embedded systems we directly create a purchase order and then we'll be creating an inbound delivery Again, is that inbound delivery will have one EWF inbound delivery. So directly the elimination of the notification was been reduced. So the main advantage of having this S4, I mean like the embedded systems is there is no master data transfer earlier, like means no core, no core interface. And now the data reduction, like what the notifications, I mean like the duplication of the deliveries have been reduced, whether it could be your inbound deliveries or whether it could be your outbound deliveries or whether it could be your posting changes or whether it could be your production orders, whatever it is, the duplication of the deliveries were being reduced in the embedded systems. That is what I was trying to convey in the mass data integrations. If you can see here, the same way we'll have a sales order against that we'll have an outbound delivery. For that outbound delivery, we'll have an outbound delivery request. Against that outbound delivery request, we'll have an outbound delivery. However, this request was no more required in our S4 system. Clear? Or any questions here? Uh, I'm sorry? Are you sharing screen or? I'm sharing the screen since from the beginning. Is it, okay. is it not visible? No, no, it's visible. It's, we can see. Maybe you have to connect again. Yeah. We need to connect again. Okay. Maybe let me reach it, guys. I'm sharing, guys. Please check once oh, again. No, I can. I can see. I think most of us can see. Uh, yeah, we can see straight on. Yeah. Okay, fine then. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, change. What I can say when we compare with the decentralized one and when I compare with the embedded one, guys. Okay. So. Uh, am I clear or any questions for anyone here, guys? Can you hear me? I can hear, but it's too low. Can you be a bit loud, please? Okay, sorry. Uh, so, mm. for the embedded, it's fine. What about decentralized? So, we, we, do we mm. still have this oh, audios or, or sorry? Yeah, yeah. so that's what I said. Right? Decentralized is also the one where we are using still. There are customers where we are using it. It's not completely, it has been removed out. That's what I'm telling. EWM will be always used in two different versions. One in the decentralized one, the other one in the embedded systems. Embedded is the one latest one where, where the customers are started using it now actually. Decentralized, that's what, from 1610 means hardly three years or four years back. That's it, where this embedded has come. Before that, Almost like every customer were using only the decentralized one. Even now, many of the customers are using this EWM. That's what I said. If in case, if your warehouse operations are too big, and that's the reason SAP will suggest to have this in a separate server. Okay, getting my point? Yep, yep. Okay. So, so we can we can say on the left hand side it is still valid for the decentralized warehouse, and on the right hand yes, side it, it is, is embedded. Still valid. It is still valid. It is yeah, not. Yeah. It is not something has been removed out. Still, it is there, and this is how the process works in the decentralized. 
and on the right hand side whatever i'm showing you this is how the process works in the embedded side okay anyhow i'm going to cover both the things when we go into the classes guys don't worry about this okay i'll show you the comparison what we have it in the decentralized and what we have it in the embedded one okay hello it's okay go ahead. yeah we can see here yep. yeah so, yeah, that's how the master data integration comes into the picture, guys. Okay, so the same way I can say now, before I directly jump into this particular 1909 futures, I'll try to tell you, okay, because these are all the futures what I had it for the 1909. I don't want to have it over here. Okay, let me just move it to other sites because I want to tell you how does a core EWM will work for me. That's what I want to show you. One second, there are so many slides. Mm. This slide, the other slide. Yep. So, if you can see this slide, guys, everyone. As I said earlier, any of the EWM, whether it could be a decentralized or whatever it is, it will be categorized into three different set of operations. As I said, one is about your inbound processing. Second one is about your storage and operations like your internal operations. The third one is about your outbound processing. Okay, so all your EWM processes will be based out of these three only. Okay, With, within this inbound again, we will have a multiple processes again. Okay, how do you have this transportation unit processing and how do we have this goods receipt management and optimizations and how do we have this inbound quality management and your internal routing. The same way when it comes to a physical inventory, replenishment, kit to stock, and the outbound planning route, wave management, picking optimizations, load management. And then apart from that, the other futures, if you can see, how does the reporting works in the AWM system? Resource and the labor management, cross-talking, yard management, uh, the tech on like connecting to your RF and RFID technologies and the advanced production integrations and the doc appointment scheduling. So these are all the functionalities that we'll be having it in the EWM system, basically. Getting my point? Hello. Yes, so, you yeah. yeah, when I this is the standard uh, inbound flow guys, but ideally I'll not touch this one. No, not is required for me. So what I want to show you is okay, the future is what we had it earlier and now. The major changes and the major futures, whatever we used to have it in the EWM earlier and now is i can tell you from 1709 i believe few of you guys have started working in 1709 yes so the major change was happened in 1709 is earlier we use we do not have this particular one actually where is that wrong one second wait yeah you can see this one okay everyone this was a future which was started from um, 1709 guys okay in the 1709 earlier once that delivery was been has been distributed to the ewm system okay we do not have the privilege of changing that delivery basically okay but now from 1709 we do have an option of changing the deliveries okay changing the deliveries in the sense we can change the delivery how by we have a flag at a warehouse level that will allow as though the deliveries has been distributed to the AWM system, you can go to our ERP systems and we can change like what we can change your quantity, you can change your batch or you can change your text or you can change your uh, uh, text items or whatever it is. But ideally, the prerequisite is only that we should not start our warehouse activities. That's it. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting your point. Uh, so, those mm. changes, even after distributing to the EWM, can only be done in ERP. They cannot be done in EWM, right? No, no. EWM at any point of time you can do it. Okay, that's not a showstopper to us. But if in case if you want to have the change to be done in the ECC site, then earlier we cannot do it because once that delivery has been mm -hmm. distributed to the WMS system. You cannot change your deliveries. You're getting that. In which system? In any yeah, of the system? 
no 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 in e sixty in e sixty that's what I'm trying okay, to say okay 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 if you okay. want to change your uh, uh, outbound delivery once you create a sales order and once you want to change your outbound delivery you cannot change it because the complete outbound delivery will be grayed out for you right correct so but now once we have this particular flag whatever it is which is against at a warehouse level such that it indicates you that you can change it but ideally if you want to change it but you have to make sure that the prerequisite is only that you should not start your warehouse activities that is one thing because if you start your warehouse activities and after that you start changing it there is no point in that right hello uh yeah so what what about the task which are already created because once the that's what i said delivery... right the tasks that's what see the tasks are created there is no point of changing it right no that's but uh, for, mm. no no correct uh, sorry sorry if the question just yeah uh, mm. because what happened if the delivery as soon as the delivery is distributed the tasks are mm. automatically created in either it's not it's not one second that task immediately it's not a standard one that you need to create it it is because you are making your pp of actions to make it work and you're creating correct. it but correct. ideally it is not a standard thing that you as soon as the delivery comes into your ewm system it is not that mm. it is always that you'll create a warehouse tasks Okay. 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 So in, in sorry in that case in that case if my PPF task uh, means PPF action has created the task then the mm. delivery cannot be changed. No, it can't be changed because you already okay. had your warehouse tasks in place, right? Okay. 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 Understood. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sriram. Also, can we uh, stop this functionality also in one seven one nine? I mean, yes, I, I am working on one seven one nine. When yes, why my delivery got distributed, I am not able to allow to do anything. Uh, means you are not able to allow, or you will be able to? Yeah, I am not able to do. Yeah, that's what you have to make a flag for that at a warehouse level. That's what I'm trying to tell you, no? Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. because this functionality has started from 1709 and it is carried forward to 1809 and to 1909 also. But this ideally, this changing of the delivery has been started from 1709 only. You're getting my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you can but do can, that. Okay. Can, can you can you do in the middle of the project, Shriram? That flag no, no, change. No, no, like you can't do it, right? No way. Yeah, exactly. You Only when you are starting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You cannot. Yeah. See any of the functionalities you can't directly implement in your in between, right? Like exactly. if you want to, exactly. if you want to implement a batch management suddenly, can you do that? Yeah, you can't, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you already had a stock in for your products. Ideally, you have to exactly. flesh out all the stock, or you have to send out all the stock. And then only you have to start implementing the batch management. The same Correct. thing only. You cannot, Correct. which is uh, pampering your existing business. You can't do like that. Any of the thing, right? Yep. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No, Shidam. You can carry on, please. okay no problem so basically <clears throat> yeah so this is one of the functionality i can say that very well it was been implemented in 191709 and all apart from that okay so maybe okay i'll directly come into this 1909 futures now which is ideally you might not be understanding at this stage why because uh, once we start doing the sessions and then I can tell you what is what has been implemented at all. As I said that they have given a new Fiori app for packing a warehouse tasks. Okay, that is one thing and for picking and for processing the deliveries. So that is one thing. Apart from that, they have given something called as an enhanced integration means what they have reduced the configuration parts earlier when it comes to the PP like for the production integration. What happens is we used to maintain the production cycle area. The, sorry the production supply area in pp and as well as in the ewm side but now it is not required only one side we will maintain that will be synced for both the systems that is what the enhanced integration these guys have given so these are all some of the futures basically which was there from 1909 earlier that is really good actually because uh, earlier we have to maintain a lot of configurations for this pp integration now it is not required for us that is one thing we can say that okay apart from that uh, another good thing i can say that is 
this is the okay maybe i'll just make it much bigger okay this is a kind of an holistic uh, flow what they have given for an automobile industry ideally this is what the solution what we were doing it for our my client as of now okay this is the current solution and now the same solution has been given from 1909 this solution we are using it from past 3 years and now this is what they have given it for 1909 release ideally how are we supplying the parts in order to manufacture a car basically because uh, that is what this is the complete flow the production supply flow how are we distributing the parts from the rack to directly to the parts to the each and every car okay how are we supplying and how are we starting it and how are we delivering it this is how we this is one of the future what has been come into the picture now okay this is one thing so apart from that in 1909 i can say that there is nothing much apart from few enhanced integrations and few fury apps and this automobile integration how we are supplying the parts from our warehouse to the shop floor that is one thing these guys have given another thing is about the warehouse kpis what are the warehouse kpis has been given so these are only the futures what we have but anyhow i'll be explaining this once we comes into the our sessions anyhow before i directly jump into this futures i'll just try to explain how does a standard ewm works and what we require in order to make this ewm to work okay hello <clears throat> yeah yes yes, yes. So now a basic ewm any of the ewm whether it could be ewm then decentralized whatever it is the basic organizational structure lies over here okay we will be requiring a plant and we'll be requiring a storage locations and this storage location will be assigning this to our warehouse number however this is our erp warehouse number guys not a ewm warehouse okay so we will be assigning this to our erp warehouse number and this erp warehouse number will be assigned to an ewm warehouse number till date we do not have the privilege of assigning a directly an ewm warehouse to our organization structure we do not have so we have to assign it to our normal erp warehouse number only okay so this is one of the organized basic organizational uh, structure sorry seram i have one question mm hmm uh, in wm warehouse number you have three digit right but i have seen in yes. the generic yes you are right it is four four yes 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 uh, yeah so okay. how, how it will sync i'm sorry how it will sync with the wm means in in wm or different warehouse number is there right you can have the same warehouse number or you can have a different warehouse number that doesn't matter okay yeah yeah please go ahead yeah what was the question here no actually i was asking i have i have seen that in wm or uh, warehouse number you have three right hmm and in ewm i have seen that warehouse number is a four digit so how yes. it works means from, from wm to ewm how it is same thing I mean like how it works in the sense we will assign to ewm to ecc warehouse number that's how it works basically but it doesn't mean that you should always have both ecc and ewm of a same warehouse number that that doesn't mean here okay yeah you can have a different warehouse number or you can have a same warehouse number also okay yeah, yeah. Oh, hello shriram can you hear me i'm pravin here yeah i can hear you pravin please go ahead yep sorry i joined late so mm. yeah so i was going through your presentation so there were some talks about the inbound deliveries mm. uh, so now you were saying that we mm. have the flex capability to change the inbound deliveries so now mm. my question is whenever we mm. change the inbound deliveries at ewm mm. end mm. so it, will it interface back and update the erp inbound delivery obviously it will update right okay that's what we so, have in the back end which is called as a qrfc so it will automatically it will update okay so we have yeah. the capability to change the inbound delivery either in the erp side or else in the scm scm we had it from long back okay oh. so it's uh -huh. it is not something uh, uh, an innovation that has been done now so the changes whatever we do it from the scm side it comes back to our erp system and it will automatically it will update that is something which we already have it from long back okay but okay. the only thing which i am trying to tell you now is 
though the deliveries has i'm talking about from the erp side here okay once the deliveries has been distributed to our awm system okay in our uh, particular erp it says that we cannot change it why because the delivery will be something which will be under uh, disabled mode right we can't change it basically if you go for your outbound deliveries and all that was the one which i was trying to tell you here if you have that enabled at a warehouse level you can change it okay, okay. even from the okay. erp side also okay. okay so now we have the flexibility now to change it in either of the boxes mm. yep yes right? that's what i'm okay. trying to say yes yep. Yep. okay okay so so okay before i go here i just want to explain you the warehouse organizational structure basically so any of the warehouse organizational structure if you can see here we'll be having it with three or four in one actually okay where an ewm warehouse number can be defined with three or four digit number and then followed by we'll have something called okay, above the warehouse we'll have something called as a storage location and then we'll have a plant and then we'll have a company code and all these things but when it comes to this particular okay particular one here if you see that okay storage type storage sections and the storage bins ideally when we compare with wm and ewm over here guys okay warehouse number can be defined with three or four digit number but when it comes to in wm side it is only with three digit number storage type can become uh, can be configured with the same thing three or four digit one but here sections in wm side sections are mandatory but here sections are not at all mandatory for us okay that's one thing and apart from that storage bins okay we have something with some template over here okay but when it comes to a wm side the template can be defined only with 10 digit but here it is of 18. you're getting me hello yeah, yeah we so these get, are all yeah. yeah these are all the master data changes and updates which i'll be going to the sessions don't worry about that but this is how the organizational structure will be there okay a warehouse number followed by a storage type storage sections and the storage bins basically okay the same way when i was talking about okay this is one of the things the warehouse master data tabs basically uh if you remember that guys okay <clears throat> in particular any of our material master if you try to create any of your products normally for a warehouse management one we will try to flag our warehouse warehouse management one and warehouse management two views if you remember that but now we do not require that to have it basically okay we always try to have the views of this thing which is of storage okay when the same product can be transferred to the ewm system and once it has been transferred to the EWM system, these are the views which will be extended. Like we'll be having the warehouse data view and the slotting and the storage type data. So these are all the views which we will be maintaining it in the EWM site. Okay. Hiram, can you put in the presentation mode, please? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see it now, guys? It's better now. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So that's what. So if you remember that, what I was trying to say here is earlier, whenever we are using this particular uh, uh, any of the product, normally what happens? We used to extend it for our warehouse tabs, warehouse management one and warehouse management two. If you remember that. Now we do not require that tabs. That's what I mean to say. We will be directly creating the material and we will be transferring it to the ewm system in the ewm system these are the tabs which we will be maintaining it okay anyhow once we create the products we will see that what is the significance of each and everything now i don't uh, require much only thing is i'm just trying to give you an overview how it looks like and these are all the strategies how you perform the putaways and all the things which will come back okay so what i'll do is i'll try to give you one of the complex processes over here like in the EWM system, we always talk about few processes basically. Give me a minute guys, one minute.
yeah sorry so out of this particular complex one we will always talk about few of the warehouse process types okay one is about your sorry guys can you hear me hello yeah. yes we can yeah, yeah so out of this we have something called as a more complex processes guys in ewm system what is that is we'll call it as a layout oriented storage control and process oriented storage control these are the most important concepts which we always talk it in the ewm system guys okay so when i'm talking about this particular concepts basically okay hello hello guys can you hear me so out of this one of the process is about the process oriented storage control okay so the process oriented storage control is the one where we will try to control the processes in a step by step means what happens is we will derive the products in a subsequent way in a sense we'll have a storage process will be de defined okay so that is what which we will be defining it in the process oriented storage control and the layout oriented storage control comes into the picture when we were using the automated warehouses okay these are the two things which comes into the picture basically so out of it i'll just give you one of the example guys which is about the deconsolidation process so what happens here is if in case if let, let me make use of of one process which is called as a deconsolidation one okay in that particular deconsolidation one what happens is whenever we are using okay let's assume that we have a, a product coming from your vendor a mixed products basically like you have a coke and pepsi coming up in the same pallet okay but ideally once you receive it in your warehouse you don't want to store the both coke and pepsi in a same uh, storage type you want to separate it basically then that point of time what we will try to do we will try to separate the coke and then we will try to separate the products i mean like coke and the pepsi basically then that point of time what happens is we have to set up one work center and then we have to break the pallet and then we have to move the products directly to the different storage types so this kind of process whatever we have we'll call it as a process oriented storage control guys give me a minute my kid is shouting over here I can't hear you, Shiram. No, 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 I was on mute actually. I was on mute. Yeah. So this is the process which I was talking about of a deconsolidation process, which is of a process-oriented storage control. Ideally, what does that mean? We have some set of products which we already know what happened, what kind of process needs to be done for that. So in order to have that particular products to derive some process over here. So we already pre-configured the steps in the system, basically, which we'll call it as an unload. If you see this one, two, three, four over here. So we will predefine the steps over here. So that we'll call it as a process oriented storage control where the products will undergo some set of process. Okay. In a sequential way that we will make use of it. Okay. In this particular process oriented storage control, we have something called as a value added services, deconsolidation. On top of it, we have a quality inspection. All these things comes into the picture. Okay, this will be used both in inbound and as well as in the outbound also, the same thing. The other important process, what we have it in the EWM is the layout oriented storage control, as I said, which will be used in the semi-automated warehouses or completely in automated warehouses, guys. I think I should have it somewhere. I believe it. Yeah. So basically, this what happens is we cannot directly ha handle the products. Why? Because we have to place the products on a conveyor belt, and from the conveyor belt, it will take you directly to the final destination bin. So this is what we'll be using it in the layout oriented storage controls basically okay so where we'll place it on the conveyor belt and from the conveyor belts it will be 
take it to your final destination bins. So this is the one which we'll be using it in your MFS and where we'll be using it in your uh, uh, automated guided vehicles and we'll be using it in, in the uh, semi-automated warehouses. So these are the two major functionalities which will be used in the EWM site. Whether it could be an inbound or whether it could be an outbound, whatever it is. After this, we have another thing called as an replenishment stock transfer documents and other things which is commonly used in any of the warehouse. But in the EWM one, the most important thing I can say that is we have something called as a PPF, okay, which is of a post processing framework. This is a kind of a tool which I can say that where it will help us to have the subsequent actions to be triggered whether if you want to have or if you want to send some messages to an external system or you want to print some emails or you want to print some labels or you want to have some workflows to be triggered all these things it's nothing but a kind of a nace kind of a thing in our ecc but it is much better than what we have it in ecc one so this is what nothing which we'll call it as a post processing framework here okay this is one of the tool which we use it here Apart from that, we can see here, these are the major differences. If you can see when I compare with the WM and an EWM side here, okay, the bin management, the placement, removal and all, you can see you do have it to some extent in WM, but when it comes to an EWM, we will be using it to that level. But the same way when I'm talking about the deconsolidation, slotting and rearrangement, transportation units, we do not even have it in the WM. We only have it in the EWM side. So this is one of the, uh, differences I can say okay and apart from that we have something called as a labor management where we will be tracking the efficiency of your labor how effectively they are using it and how effectively they are utilizing the workload and all slotting and the rearrangement also will be doing it how are we changing the products based on if you're having some seasonal products and how are we moving the products from one place to another place and how the system is getting triggered that's one thing dock appointment scheduling how effectively we are planning our trucks okay so these are all the features that we'll be looking after one by one once we get into the sessions guys okay hello yes it's okay yes Shira. okay so we will yeah. be covering all those detail into our uh, session yeah, yeah because it has been a demo so i can't just put everything yeah, no, no, in no, one no, of us yeah it is not so, so we have this material flow system also integrated with EWM, right? Sorry? Material flow system, MFS. Material flow system, basically in our uh, idea systems, we cannot uh, make it done. Why? Because we need to have a third party tools like PLCs and other stuff, which <clears throat> we can't make it done here. Okay. But apart from that, other things can be done here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions, guys? Hello. No, we are good to go. Okay. So this is how the EWM. I'm just giving you a very brief overview I've given here because I, I didn't touch in detail of each and every topic because I just want to give you an overview what is an EWM and how does an EWM looks like. Once we step into the sessions, I can just try to explain you much detail how it works and all. Then based on that, we can discuss much better in that things. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shri Ram motion here so uh, apart mm -hmm. there are two ways so uh, we can uh, deploy the ewm either it can be mm -hmm. the embedded or uh, standalone scenario so i believe once we have the setup basic setups like core interface in case of a standalone and the mm -hmm. embedded so these scenarios what you are explaining here these will mm -hmm. be same for in, in compared to both the systems there is no special settings required for one and another right which 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 one you're talking about so this have been management placement whatever you're showing here labor management uh -huh. doc yes yes, yes. so okay. uh -huh. these these will be same either it is a standalone or embedded right ah that's what the Aren't... core functionalities will never change that's what i was trying to tell you okay yep so uh -huh. so once we once we have the basic setup either it can be an embedded or standalone mm, that's yes, it so yes. post that whatever whatever the scenarios you are displaying here so mm. there there these scenarios don't need a special settings if you are doing in 
one box and another box right yeah yeah that, that's that right. doesn't make any sense yeah okay okay yeah or else we have to note down so these are the special settings required in case of a standalone and these are the special settings required in case of an embedded or either it can be a slotting or a docking or a flexible process modeling etc etc no that's that's not a big thing that well i'll tell you what has to be maintained and all these things okay okay yeah so any other questions guys before i uh, sign off for the day uh shiram a small question um, i think mm -hmm. you have shown that into the different deployment model of ewm like mm -hmm. uh, is it possible that my s4 hana is connected using the embedded warehouse and also connected to decentralized warehouse how no that's not possible either you have to connect it only one how a single warehouse can be connected to a multiple systems no no not single means means two different plant two different warehouse one can oh, use the can decentralized that's and one can use the embedded mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is possible but ideally yeah you can do it but one warehouse for multiple one that is not possible no no one warehouse will not but maybe one uh, is different storage location if they are connected to different warehouse then it should be possible Mm, that is anyhow it is possible because say like my I, my my plant has 10 storage location one i want to connect to ewm and one i wanted to connect to decentralized warehouse so that can be done at any point of time okay, okay. okay. yeah all right any questions uh shiram shiva here yeah, yeah shiva yeah, I think it may be a stupid question, but still, I uh, just want to ask. Uh, it's fine. Are you Tell going me. to teach uh, only functionality or the technical side also? Technical in the sense, what technically you're looking out for? Okay, if suppose I'm doing a production support. Hmm. Okay, and I want to do some enhancements or something. So, will you be teaching us like SAP coding or something like that? kind of that is not there at this stage because uh, basically my intention is only to understand the core functionality of the ewm one that whatever you're asking that will be done it in the advanced content only not in this one okay we have another thing called as an advanced uh, ewm training so in that part i'll be explaining you how it has to be done what are the function modules and all these things that i can explain over there but here i can't mix up both things here this is completely different and that is completely different basically oh, so sorry sorry uh, shiram what was the question um, miss miss part of it please no ideally uh, expecting any kind of an enhancements and how it has to be implemented in the ewm system and all these things uh, actually uh, okay okay but but as, as part of the training like we will be going through like how to activate the baddies and all those because if no, no, that will be done but if in case if you want to have a real life example like how it has to be ah, done okay. that has yeah. not been included here that's what i want i mean to say basically okay uh, okay so basically you're going to explain all the functionalities in this in this training uh, not uh, about the function uh, sorry technical side you're going to do in this training right I think that's what is functionality in the sense the core functionality is that will be explained each and everything but the technicality whatever you are expecting that will be explained in a different way. okay uh so one more question so if you want to do the advanced do we need to do this or directly we can go to the advanced level uh, if like if you're already aware of ewm and what are the functionalities of an ewm then it's okay but if you don't know then it is not suggestible for you okay 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 and uh, one more question sorry uh, please so is there any certifications for this ewm i'll be providing you that certification dumps don't worry about that i mean like i'm not promising that the same thing will be coming up here but the okay. questions whatever it is that that will be giving it to you okay no, that's, it's that's okay but uh, but they have the certification for this right that's what yeah 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 we do okay. have 9.5 certificate the latest one you do have it okay okay yeah so should i be morally here yeah Murli, tell me uh, so the technical uh, stuff what you're uh, telling you that will be in advanced stage so that will be mm. covered up the completion of this uh, course exactly see basically that is completely com advanced one in the sense why i kept it as an advanced because first you have to understand the core functionality how does an ewm works without understanding this if you directly make use of it there's no point of it yeah i That's got it reason. i got it yeah so yeah. Um, what I think is like this course is going to take around three months and after three months, 
will be teaching the advanced is that right exactly so advanced we already had a content and that is completely advanced which is how if in case there are some uh, functionalities like cartonization planning or advanced production integrations so all these things that i'll be explaining it over there and telling you each and everything what is the benefit of making use of it and what is the benefit of making use of this so all these things that i'll be taking care of there actually okay okay so it's like a continuous process the first part will be yeah. configuration yeah. the basics and yeah. the second will be the advancements exactly so this is not a complete basic course i'm not going to teach you here it is completely also a kind of an advanced but beyond that if in case if you're expecting because ewm is a very vast module each and every concept is a very vast so that's the reason i'll be touching each and every part but if in case if you are expecting more than that then that is what what we are covering it in the advanced which we already had some batches for that no i totally agree with your concept like the first the okay. basics and then the advancements yes yeah. thank you uh, okay shri ram just a question here uh, so you said it it takes a uh, three months so it's a daily basis how much hours even i have only? no idea what is the schedule as of now so i have to we have to check with mavin only i don't know what exactly uh, we are based out of because i based out in cet time zone and you guys of some may be from uh, ist and some might be from other time zones so that still i even not aware of it we only have so if we time. if we ask for the weekend classes so how much time see whether it is a weekends or a weekdays weekdays i'll only take 45 minutes to one hour not more than that okay mm -hmm. if it is a weekend i'll take it for two and a half two and a half hour sessions that's how okay. we can work out so basically okay. anything would be the same five hours five hours only that's how the practice yeah. is okay 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 so basically uh, either a weekend or a daily it will be three months it's not restricted to three months it no, depends on an approximate yep yeah that's what because okay. it depending upon the course and again depending upon the people understanding sometimes it might be delayed also because of uh, some issues and yeah, that, that, that's right. um, yeah 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 got it okay yeah, uh, like uh, like if mm. if for some reason if somebody missed the class like i'm i'm you have not the in... recordings right you yeah, have exactly. the recordings yeah, so, so, okay, okay. you can Perfect. go through that if in case if you are having any doubts that that will be repeated mm -hmm. in the sessions again that's okay. see i'm not a guy where i want to complete the sessions immediately within two months and then i have to take up a new batch mm -hmm. i'm not of that guy okay till you understand that i'll be with that only don't worry about it okay yeah good good yeah. <laughs> and, so, yeah. uh, please have a recap like uh, what all things you'll be covering in details like uh, the configuration standpoint and all mm, see whatever you have it in the course content that will be covered 100% okay if in case sometimes the systems might not be supporting us because of various reasons then that particular topic i'll be sharing you the configuration document don't worry about that okay apart from that whatever has been shared in the course content by navin that will be completely configured from the scratch and then that will be showed up in the system okay okay yeah. any questions no Ah uh, yeah, one more. <laughs> Sorry, maybe the last. Yeah, uh, like when you go on to help. Sap. Com and in in Aspol Ana seventeen oh nine, when you go to uh, uh, EWM, it takes you to mm -hmm. nine point five service pack two. We don't have a separate uh, kind of documentation for this, or they Sap just combined it into as a one package. They have combined it into one package basically. Okay. Yeah. So it it is all almost same. Maybe uh, it is all or just the same only. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Good. I think it was nice. So uh, just leave your feedback to Naveen, guys. Whether if it is good yes. or bad. Okay. I'll try to improve myself. <clears throat> okay. Okay then. Sure. Sure. Thank uh, you, guys. Thank you, Sri Ram. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Please. Sorry. No, no. I think uh, there's nothing but uh, just one thing. I mean, you all talk to Navin, but uh, is there any way I can talk to you personally? Because I have a few more questions so which I need to talk regarding the same. The only personally to me or to Navin? Oh, personally, personally to you. I'll talk to Navin later, but uh, I want to just talk to you personally. Okay, you can ask a personal phone call with Navin. He will arrange a conference call. If in case, if you really need it. Okay. 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 She sure. will arrange it after this call. If you want, you can call to Navin. He will arrange a, a telephone call through conference. You can talk to Navin that. Okay. Okay. If you okay. really want to have it personally. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any yeah, other thanks. questions, guys? Before I sign off.
No, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, guys. And thanks, Sir Ram. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Bye bye. Thank you, Sir Ram. Thank you, Sir Ram. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Sir Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Ram. This Hello. conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> Sorry, Siram. Hi, hi, guys. Sorry, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So everyone is able to see my screen, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Okay. So now today we will start uh, uh, the first session of our EWM. One minute, guys. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll start our first session of our EWM today, guys. Okay. So before we start our uh, EWM thing, uh, we have something called as a system connections. And then we need to check how the system connections are being happening from one system to other system. Okay. So basically, we are uh, having this 1909 in 300 client guys. Okay. So the very first thing is we will be creating some organizational structure like plant company code and then the storage locations followed by your warehouse and your erp warehouse and all okay so once we have defined it we ideally need to understand how the systems are getting connected which is ideally in the real time the basis guys will be doing it we will not be having the access but still we should be having an overview of what is happening and how the connections are being set up from ERP to the EWM system. Clear? So as being the first day, so today I'll not uh, deep dive into much things. So I'll take only a one hour of session today to make use of it. So from next week onwards, we'll take it a bit longer and then we'll make it happen. Okay. Any questions, guys? No. Yeah. So now, ideally, if you see this embedded systems, like whatever the version you take it, okay you can see both the logistics execution here and as well as the ewm both coming in the same node ideally okay but ideally when it comes to a decentralized ideally we will be having ecc in a different version and ewm in a different version that's what we discussed yesterday okay now as being we are having this in the same system it doesn't mean that but like there is some things like still we have to take care of the connections here okay so it doesn't mean that we do not require and we don't need to do any as such connections over here still we have to perform few of the connections such as your rfcs and creating your logical systems and creating your dummy logical systems and all these things are still required okay so before i move into that first let me create some organizational structure over here okay so it's the basic uh, thing which I'm trying to do over here. Are we here now? It is S4-1909 or S4-1909, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Where is this? We can see the system status it over is, here, right? It is in the last. Yeah. Second, second. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the second tab the yeah, install production version we'll have a second tab also we can see it only limited one here yeah. which one you mean i'm sorry no no in, in the same same screen there is a second tab now if you go to the second tab 
where you were just now no no go back to the same screen you just click no no it's mm -hmm. status and uh, yeah this this magnifying so glass the... magnifying yeah. glass and then the mm -hmm. second tab of the install okay. production install yeah. production versions yeah there okay. we can see this <clears throat> okay perfect yeah thanks yeah normally we can also see over here yeah yeah but there you have to scroll down a little bit you have to search for it yeah. yeah yeah so this is ideally that's what i said 1909 this particular one has been subdivided into three things I mean, like one is for your other tm uh, 400 or whatever 300 is for our ewm client okay so make sure that you're getting the 300 client access going forward okay because all our data will be in a 300 client not in 400 or 200 clients so ideally one minute i'll have to okay before uh, i move in i need uh, what is this where is gone <laughs> The basic organizational structure we require so what is the basic org structure we generally require in any of the businesses normally uh, any anyone guys company code plant uh, storage location yes correct same thing right any of the business we require the same stuff so here as well we will be using the same thing like what let me show you So the basic organizational structure within the EWM, we will be requiring a plant, a two storage locations, which is nothing but receive one dock and the other one is for the available for the same and a warehouse number. And ideally I'll give you an overview. Why do we require a two storage locations? Because EWM is a business where it can run with one single storage location also, or you can even have it with two different storage locations also and a warehouse number and an EWM warehouse number. So that's how we will start with the organizational structure now. So basically what I'll try to do is, so the company code companies and all these things, normally I'll just using the existing one WM01, whatever I have, the FI people or the finance guys will be doing it. And even this, okay, now I'll be creating one plan for us guys. Okay, I'll just copy this existing one. WM, I'll put it as 02. So you can even copy it from the thousand also because it doesn't mean that you have to copy the same thing because I had my own configurations and my own things in WM01 plant. So I just want that to copy to my same plants for my classes. Okay, if you want, you can make use of the thousand or whatever the standard we had. Okay, so first thing is I've created one plant, okay, which is WM02. And top of it, now I'll be defining some storage locations. Now, what is a storage location, guys? Anyone? Storage location is the IM. Uh, it's basically hmm. the representation of, uh, it's it's IM, inventory management representation. Hmm. What exactly it does? I can have multiple storage area, storage uh, locations uh, in the same plant. You know, it's just a general physical uh, identification of the stock huh? on the M level. Yes. Yeah. So ideally, it is a physical representation of the stock, whatever we are trying to do. So as of now, I have defined two different storage locations. One is 1030 and 1040. Receive on dock and available for the sale. The significance, I'll go. It, I'll take it forward later on. And now I required one purchase organization. Why? What is the purpose of having the purchase organization, guys? In order to create the POs and receive the stock. Uh, inside and in order to make sure that all this uh, purchase procurement related activities will be taken care of under this purchasing organization, right? Correct. Now, 
I'll be defining one ERP warehouse number. Okay, this is just a dummy warehouse number. We do not require much of it, but why do we require this? Because this ERP warehouse number, it acts as a barrier to our organizational structure and to our EWM warehouse number. You're getting my point, what I'm trying to say? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we So it's just a dummy warehouse number for us. If there's no nothing, no warehouse activities will be performed. But ideally, still, though it is a decentralized or though it is an embedded one, we ideally require one ERP warehouse number in order to act as a barrier to the EWM system and to our the organizational structure what we are trying to create here. Okay, the first thing. Once we have defined this particular organizational structures, okay, I even required the shipping points and all. I'll come back to this later, which I'm not doing it at this stage, but we do require it later. Okay. Uh, assign plan to the company code. Yes, we have, uh, okay, the WM01 is my company code and WM02, which I've taken. And then the second thing is, Sales and distribution, I'll just make it the standard one, whatever we have. I don't want to touch it. Okay. Assign purchasing organization. Okay. My company code, I'll make it as WM01. Okay. I'm assigning this plant also. Okay. <coughs> okay. WM01 has been assigned to WM02. Now, assign warehouse numbers. Now, what we are trying to do here, I'm trying to assign my plant and my storage locations, means WM02. I'm assigning the storage location of 1030 and the warehouse of WM2. Okay, so WM02, 1040, and WM2. Right? So, what did I do now? So, I've assigned my plant and my warehouse number and my two different storage locations. Okay. Am I clear or any questions so far? I have a question, Siram. Yeah, um, please. What about the SD uh, uh, organizational structure? Because when, in the ECC, when we create mm -hmm. a, an outbound delivery, the mm -hmm. SD structure is involved. It means that um, so I don't mind I'm case. sorry, sorry, yeah. I missed it. Your voice was breaking. Can you just come back for the thing which you have repeated, please? I was. Yeah, uh, my question is what about the mm. SD uh, organizational structure? How is involved in the EWM? Because okay. in the outbound SD. delivery in the ECC is involved. Okay, SD organization and structure in the sense we will be creating a customer master and we will be requiring our, uh, what do you say, that distribution channel and the sales organizations and all these things. That's it. Apart from that, we do not require much of it actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any questions here? It's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now we are assigning this warehouse number, plant, and the storage locations over here. Now, the basic organization. Sorry, sorry, Shidam. Sorry, Shidam. Just for mm -hmm. I think the 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 question what he is uh, asked. I think so. Uh, is it assumed that for EWM we do not do any SD related organizational additional assignment? We just use the ERP assignment only, and we don't use any what extra for EWM. Like, like, the, like sales hmm. organization, distribution channel, that, point. DC, that is all we do in ERP only, right? As we used to do before, as we used to do exactly. before, but See, nothing that, new for EWM, hmm. right? This is what the doubt is. Even yeah. the organizational structure, whatever I've done, it is the same organizational structure if you are using in, uh, in exactly. case of you, if you're having a warehouse management. There's nothing exactly. new as of now I've did here, right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can make use of your own, I mean, like if you want to create your own sales distribution, your sales organizations and the divisions and all, you can do that. But I just want to make use of the standard one. I'm just going ahead, okay? Now, okay. So we have created some basic organizational structure over here, guys. Once we have created with that basic organizational structure, we go. Now, 
I'm moving down here. If you can see integration with other SAP components, okay. Once I've moved down here, you can see there is a node called as an extended warehouse management. Once I click on this extended warehouse management, I can see there is something called as basic settings, basic settings for data transfer, basic settings for EWM linkage. These are the three different nodes which we will be discussing today. Okay, any questions here? Now, once these are the two settings, basic settings for the system landscape and for the data transfer ideally, but data transfer we will not be using much because this will be used only <coughs> by the way, we are using a decentralized version, but as being we were using an embedded system, this node is not that much use for us. So now coming to the first, sorry, Should, any questions? Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, for the for the whole course, are we be, are, are we going to be only doing the embedded uh, version or hmm. are we going to use uh, a decentralized system? I, I would we will be mainly focusing on the embedded side, but wherever the decentralized com is coming into the picture means whatever the changes or whatever has been done. I'll be comparing with the decentralized system, okay? But all the, the all the scenarios will be built up only in the uh, 1909 system, which is an embedded one, okay? Thank you. Yeah, but wherever the changes or whatever the uh, changes has been done with the decentralized and the embedded, that I'll be showing you the overview. That is enough, okay? Now. Coming over here, what is this particular basic settings for the system landscape? Okay, before I move into that, there is something called as basic settings for the EWM linkage. So what I was trying to do here is there are something called as configure SAP EWM specific parameters, define queue for the EWM system, generate a distribution model, and all these things. So let me first explain this thing, okay? Configure SAP EWM specific parameters means, now if I see that, here I can see my warehouse of ERP1, which is a WM2, has been configured here. Do you see that? WM2, hello? I mean, like configured in the sense, whatever we have created it down there, it is reflecting now here. Now, as we all aware that this particular warehouse, which is of an ERP1, it is no more uh, a warehouse, it is just a barrier for us between to our EWM system and to our organizational structure. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to make the system to understand that this EWM2, which is a logistics execution warehouse, is no more a local warehouse management or a decentralized warehouse management or an extended warehouse management. Now, what is a decentralized warehouse management case? Any idea to anyone? Hello? Uh, yeah, where where your warehouse management system is running into a separate system, not on ERP. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, it is also the same of your uh, warehouse management, but ideally it will be running it in a different system, basically. You're getting that? Hello? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Okay, so it is ideally the same system, but, but it is not of a different system. It would be of same system, but it will be running it in a different uh, landscape, basically. That is what we'll call it as a decentralized. Now, my ERP warehouse number, is it of a local warehouse management or a decentralized warehouse management? It's none of the above. It is only an extended warehouse management. Agreed? because I'm trying to assign my warehouse to an EWM one. So it will act as an extended warehouse management. So that was the first configuration step which we will be doing it. You're getting my point now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So first thing, so what I'm trying to tell me is my ERP warehouse number, whatever it is, we are trying to have the extended warehouse management as a link and here we have something called as a distribution immediately so what does that distribution immediately refers to basically so the distribution immediately is nothing but okay it is telling you that as soon as my deliveries are being distributed 
from ERP to EWM or from EWM to ERP. I want the system to distribute it immediately. Means what does that mean? Here, there are two things of data which will be transferred every time. One is your master data. The other one is about your transactional data. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about your master data, it is always through your integration model, which is nothing but your core interface. But in the embedded systems, this core interface has been eliminated. It is no more required for us. But when it comes to your transactional data, it is always through your QRFC, okay, which is queued remote function call, which we'll be talking about. Now, in this particular one, if I am selecting this distribute immediately a document creation in the sense as soon as I create any of my purchase order or any of means purchase order against that will create an inbound delivery. As soon as I create any of my inbound delivery and I save it, I want this inbound delivery to be distributed immediately to the EWM one. The same way with the sales order and an outbound delivery. As soon as I create an outbound delivery, I want that particular outbound delivery to be distributed to the EWM system immediately or any production order. That is what the significance of this. Distribute immediately a document creation. Clear? Any questions now? No, it's clear for me. Okay. Uh, question so, on second part, uh, Shiram. Uh, it says it's top distribution. I'm coming so, to that now. Ah, okay, 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 I'm coming. Okay. So stop distribution will only come into the picture whenever we are trying to upgrade your systems from 7.0 to some kind of a 9.5 or whenever we are trying to update your versions then that point of time the stop distribution will be coming into the picture. Okay, you don't want any of your deliveries to be distributed then that point of time only this will come into the picture guys clear. It means that the, the message from ERP to EWM uh, are accumulated in, in a queue, right? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, if you put a, a stop, mm -hmm. all the messages from ERP to EWM are accumulated okay. in a queue? Is no, it, it will not be distributed even. It is not been accumulated in the queue as well. It will not be moved actually, okay? okay. It will not be moved. Okay, so this is the one which if in case if you are trying to uh, upgrade your systems, then that point of time, this will come into the picture. Okay. Okay. Uh, but Fine. then, sorry, sorry, uh, next part of the uh, question, then, then hmm. what will happen with those delivery which has been created during that time when uh, the system was still running and the deliveries were still creating? You can manually distribute it. That's fine. We can go it for a manual distribution. That can be done. Okay. okay. Yeah. You have an option, okay, where we can distribute it manually also. That point of time, we can distribute it manually also. That is not at all a problem. Okay. Okay, but that that will not happen. Like it, there cannot be a kind of the badge of where which which keep all the delivery in a bucket and once we you can do grid, that. See, you... using that particular see that transaction, you can run it in the background and then you can post it. I mean, like you post it in the sense you can make the deliveries to be available in the backend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now here there is something called as an okay earlier the communication earlier what we used to have. Earlier, we used to have something called as multiple communication channels. One is about a TRFC, the other one is about a QRFCs and all. Now, TRFC has been completely removed. That is nothing but it is a transactional RFC. Okay. But now, this is what the QR, QRFC will be given here. Okay. Which is only one option is available for us, which is queued and remote function call here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So these are the three different uh, uh, options which we will be flagging it once we are making our ERP warehouse number as an EWM warehouse number. The very first thing. And now I was talking about yesterday. There was an option of a delivery change. Like what? Once the deliveries are being distributed to the EWM system we do have an options of changing the deliveries at an ECC level, right? 
So that was the option, which is this the delivery change. We can flag this over here. Okay. So these are all the cutover uh, activities. Once we do it only one time. So once we save this, the delivery change option will be enabled for that particular warehouse number. You're getting my point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. This, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I, uh, it's clear for me. Okay, so this uh, is what the other flex, uh, Shriram, for can you please explain those also UD batch determination? Yeah, these are the ones where we will be selecting the unchecked deliveries and the goods received only for the EWM when we are trying to do it for the production scenarios. Batch determination in the EWM, which we will be used it later, but not at this stage. Okay, so that's the reason I'm not explaining it at this stage because uh, there's no point of explaining it now. Okay, okay, but that will be covered later. Huh? That we can discuss it later. Yes. <coughs> so. Okay. Okay. So this is the first step of configuration which will be performing it in the system guys okay we have made my erp warehouse number as an awm1 okay any questions here hello so so far so good yeah okay. yes you go. okay perfect so now i'll be just moving into the next step here okay now we have something called as a queue. So this is what the queue transfer, which I'll tell because there's a lot of settings are related to the queues. I'll come back to this node again because the integration part itself, it will take at least one, two sessions. Okay. So I'll cover that in the second or third session. Now generate the distribution model. Now this is one of the important thing. What is this uh, is, as I said uh, just now, we are having two different types of data, right? One is about your master data. The other one is about your transactional data. Now, in order to have your transactional data to be transferred, like what you will be transferring normally, your deliveries, okay? In order to have your transactional data to be transferred from one system to another system, basically, the system has to identify or the system has to make sure what you're transferring for that sap has given something called as a baddies okay now if you see this here these are all the standard methods and the standard baptis whatever are available so now if you are trying to transfer your master uh, your inbound delivery or your outbound delivery and your production orders so these are the standard methods and these are the standard BAPIs which are available which we will be making use of it ideally you're getting my point okay so we need to generate this distribution model every time whenever we are creating a new warehouse number so this distribution model will help us to distribute our data from ERP to the EWM system getting it yeah yeah so in order to distribute this and how to create the model views and make sure that for one system i mean like for one uh ideally there would be only one model it can't be multiple models available so it is only a one but ideally systems are creating we are creating more than here one in the sense it will create some discrepancies how to check this we can even check it from the transaction of bd 64 so if you see this this is a distribution model which i have created and we will be making use of this one because for one client to another client we should only use only one if you are using a multiple one system will not transfer the data and it will create some discrepancies for us so make sure that so what are we trying to do you see for outbound delivery changes request changes and for inbound delivery and for these things so it should, these are the standard BAPIs which we will be making use of it. As of now, these are the warehouses which are there. Now what I'll be doing it, I'll be creating it for my warehouse also. Now what is my warehouse? WM2, this is my ERP warehouse. Now 
here comes about the logical system what is this logical system refers to so now we have to go back to the note which the first one okay is here basic settings for the system landscape these are all the basis settings which we will not touch it at all but ideally still we will be knowing it what is the significance of it so here we have something called as a name logical system so what is this logical system ideally it is nothing but it is just the representation of the system which we are trying to use now if you see this s4 h300 right now if you can see this here s4 h clnt 300 is our erp client can you see this <sighs> hello but in this case is the erp uh, client mm. right Mm, this is an ERP client and the same okay. way we will be defining the EWM client also. This is the EWM client 300 T41 EWM 300. This is our EWM one. Getting it? Yes. So ideally we are even, referring even, sorry, uh, ah. is a, sorry Shiram. So even we are in the embedded system, we still need to define the EWM as a That's separate. That's what I was telling you. Even it is an embedded system as well, we will be referring to two different systems. Mm -hmm. One is your ERP system, the other one is about your EWM system. Okay. Correct. That is no change whether if it is in decentralized or whether if it is an embedded one. That remains the same. Okay. Clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I was referring to this particular one, which is T41 EWM 300. This is the client. Okay, there are two different things. One is for my ERP one, and the other one is for my EWM one. Okay. Okay. Now, once we have done with this, actually, what we are supposed to do here, we are assigning the logical system to the client here. Okay. So, what is this assign logical system to the client? I'll be assigning it. Now, 300 is my client number. Don't touch these settings and don't uh, do any changes over here guys, because this is all a one time activity and we will do it once we will be assigned. I mean, like, I mean, to say that if we do any such changes, this will affect the complete warehouses for all the warehouses basically okay now here we are assigning this s4 hcl into 300 whatever we have defined it for the erp1 and we are assigning them client number once we have done with this okay assigning the clients and all there is something called as setup rfc destination means that is nothing but sm59 transaction okay this is your SM59 transaction where we are trying to set up the link between our ERP system and the EWM system. Now, what is my EWM system, guys? It's T41. Agree? It's T41 EWM 300. Right. So, in this particular T41 EWM 300, I'll be assigning all these things, but which is not our part. Don't worry about this here we can just go and we can click on the connection test we can see the transfer between the both the systems is happening every 11 milliseconds which we can ideally see it over here okay so these are all the basis settings which it would be done okay hello this 11 millisecond, uh, Shiram, like how it is defined, though it is not none, means not. No, a, that a, is a, that is nothing to do with us. We will be get, I'm sorry, please tell me. No, no, um, I know, like it is not a EWM consultant, but just to understand, like how, how mm. this 11 to 30 millisecond will make a difference, or, or those, those settings are changeable <clears throat> by basis itself. No, I, I didn't get this, please. No, no, what I mean to say, those 11 millisecond means after every millisecond, we are sending a message from ERP to... No, that one. data is getting transferred. That's what it means then, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, okay. That's nothing somewhere we can define it how. It's a system, how the data is getting transferred. It's only to check. That's it, okay? Hi, okay. Srinam, I have a question. Yeah, please. Um if you are um, using one ERP system, uh, sorry, two ERP mm -hmm. systems to one um, EWM system, 
you would still be uh, creating the uh, two ERP systems in the logical system and doing an assignment uh, to the logical systems, correct? Come back, please. I missed it in a moment. Uh, uh, I'm in a situation where um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be having one decentralized mm -hmm. EWM client, and then mm -hmm. two different SAP ERP systems would be connecting to that ERP uh, to the EWM system. Yeah. Right. So in that case, mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. would be uh, creating two logical systems for the ERP systems as well. Yes. Yes. And then so assign we'll be them. Creating Hmm. Yeah, and then we'll be assigning it over here. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Now, once we have assigned and all this stuff has been done, now we will generate a distribution model here. Now, what is my warehouse here? WM2 and my logical system. What is my logical system for the EWM? It's T41, right? EWM300. And my distribution model would be EWM here. Okay, so these are the ones which we will be creating it. Okay, let me create it. And now you can see it over here. We will be assigning all this things automatically. The system will be coming out of here. Okay, so we have generated this particular distribution model. Okay, so this particular WM2 and T41, EWM300 and EWM, this is just the creation of a distribution model for our ERP warehouse number. Getting it? Yes. Okay, so now we can check whether our warehouse has been assigned and our warehouse has been created for a distribution model. Clear. <coughs> Any questions here so far? Um, uh, sorry, it's me again. Uh, mm. As I said to you earlier, if we are using um, two different ERP systems, it means they'll have two different warehouses. Can we Obviously. have, so we can have, we have two, right. two different uh, distribution models? Oh, yeah, you can have it because it's of two different systems, right? It is not in the yes. same system. No, you can have a two okay. different systems and two different distribution models. That's fine. But ideally, each and every warehouse number should be assigned with a distribution model. That's one thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's say, you know, per, mm. per, e, per every ERP system, you'll mm. have one warehouse. And for every mm. warehouse, uh, ERP warehouse number, you will, you will be creating a distribution model assigning yes. to logical. All right. Yes. Okay. It has to be done because that's a mandatory thing. Okay. And the, and that can be different as well. That can be different, but ideally, a system. I mean, like a business, a client, whatever you said now, it should have a yeah. I mean, like a distribution model should be maintained for each and every warehouse, irrespective of whether you have hundred warehouses or whatever it is. Each and every warehouse should be assigned to a distribution model. Okay. Okay. All right. If in and one question like all your warehouses are being assigned to an EWM warehouse numbers, then only it is required. If it is not being assigned to an EWM, then this is not required at all. Okay. Uh, we haven't done yet. It's a, it's a greenfield. It's it's in process. So okay, that's what. If all your warehouses are being a, assigned to an EWM warehouse, then only we will be requiring it. If it is not, then it is not required. And this is all part of your cutover activities basically. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So this is so, uh, the Shiram, sorry, sorry. Du uh, during this practice, we all will be creating our own warehouse and we'll, you we'll can be creating those model way. itself. Huh? Exactly. No, 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 no. Don't create multiple models. No, 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 no. For each yeah. warehouse, for each each yes. our 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 colleagues will be creating mm. one warehouse and one model yes. at least. Huh? Okay, okay. Well, yeah. well, one model in the sense don't create multiple models that's what i was telling you e each system should have only one model which is a distribution model that's what i was trying to refer here okay see all the warehouses will be assigned only to one single model which was ideally created here you're getting that hello <laughs> i think he was um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. EW model is one what he, i think I, anupam i think you're saying one distribution model for each warehouse so each warehouse yeah exactly so yeah. say like like uh, like uh, anupam is creating one uh, model for mm. his own warehouse and someone else is creating one and so if we are 10 so we will be creating uh, distribution model for 10 warehouses though they are same at the end as you are showing here uh, yeah, yeah. because you objects should are create same. business objects yeah, are same. you should create it why because this is the one which transfers your data from correct. erp to the ewm system exactly because correct. here 
we are if you see this now what is happening here we are telling who is your sender means our erp system and who is your receiver this is your ewm system right so i'm telling to my system that my erp system will be sending you some of my inbound deliveries or my outbound deliveries or my production orders and my receiver would be this one what is my model my model is only one which is an ewm model okay where i'll be having all these things like what the standard bap is or whatever we see all these things but multiple warehouse numbers will be assigned to this model and this is what okay you're getting my point now got it, got it. yeah yeah okay so this is just a basic setup which we are trying to discuss over here now as of now the same way we will be even discussing within the same configuration like we will be assigning a warehouse numbers and we'll be doing it everything in the ewm side also guys so as being it's the first thing today so i'm not going much ahead so we will discuss that in the next sessions onwards so that in the meantime you'll be getting access and all so you'll be used to it so from the next week on saturdays and sundays i'll be taking a bit longer times and then we'll explain it much further okay hello yes okay any questions guys not so far so good okay then so next week we'll catch up at the same time okay on saturday and sundays and then we'll uh, try to execute and then we'll see further okay so uh, just just to just to brief like when anybody will be creating customization there will be a transport request created and we can define yes. our own or is it the number you range define that here that there is no problem in that you can define but don't touch every, my warehouses that's no, it no, okay no, no, of course but all the objects can be assigned to the same transport right you need not that can be assigned yeah. yeah but the only thing is uh, make sure and don't delete any of the standard settings that's it okay no 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 yeah because people what they do is they try to delete the standard configuration and that creates a lot of issues going yeah. forward that's only because it's an ida system and we don't have a control as well that is one thing actually correct 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 no the client yeah. zero, zero should never never be touched i think <laughs> that's what is happening in the previous 1801 client actually many of the people have deleted many of the standard ewm configuration so most of the scenarios didn't work out there again mm -hmm. i have to so there was a lot of breakups has been happened for some batches because of these issues okay that's the reason i request you copy it to your own warehouses and you do whatever you want to your warehouse right. but don't touch the standard settings because it would be very hard even for me because i have to uh, uh, keep my time here and everyone's time so just oh, keep sorry. it in that mind please that's yeah. it okay yeah yeah so if you happen to talk to navin can you please ask send uh, ask him to send the access to everyone and uh, no no navin will take care of it i oh, generally okay. will not take care of all these things i just only give the sessions only he will only take care of your uh, all right. all uh, right. what do you say that access and your recordings and your materials and everything because yeah. i have given all my materials to him and he will be sharing that with you the recordings and all he will only take care you can directly contact navin there's no uh, uh, issue in that okay all right then so all the admin related activities navin will take care of it you don't want to worry about it okay all right hey sir okay, are we going to have a like two two and a half hour class from next weekend or yes yes ideally that's what the plan is because of the first day session so i have taken only a one hour i don't want to make it more complicated on the day one itself so from second class i'll be taking it a bit longer as i said because it's a weekend and if i take only one hour there's no point of time here so it will like, likely uh, shiram how those classes will be structured say like you will be giving those uh, uh, like uh, those details on screens and all those and then next day we will be doing the sessions or the practice and doing the systems uh, sure. set up on our own or like what is the plan? no you can parallelly do start doing it right there's no you, you don't need to because once this today i have created some basic organization structure when i come to the second class now i'll start creating the other organization structure from the ewm side and all these things so you'll be having time right in the weekdays so you can just go through that video and you can start creating your own organizational structures and all and if you're having yeah. any questions you can come back on the weekends right yeah 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 you'll be having so ample maybe, of time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure sure that's what it so after after completing the class only then uh, we can go and then next yeah, yeah, day yeah. after completing uh, the class after an hour can be saturday and an sunday can be mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what the both session recordings normally what i know is uh, once we completed the session probably you might be receiving it on monday because it has to record and it has to upload so it takes some time 
ideally so most probably by tomorrow or maybe our day after you'll have all the recordings in your email right so you can go through that recording and then you can start your once you get your system access you can start uh, creating the same stuff whatever i did it here right good 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 yeah okay okay yeah. guys any yes. any other questions thank you Jim. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Then, okay. Chalo, um, let's meet up next weekend, and then we'll see. That, okay? Sorry, sweet. I have a question. Ah, please. Sorry, if that is okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know the scenario. The scenario I said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in which version of um, a decentralized EWM is it available? Where you have two different ERP clients connecting to one EWM? One second. You said two ERP clients connecting to a single where EWM system or how? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, so what? So here, <coughs> it's nothing to relate to the version. You can do it in any version, actually. Um, all right. Okay. I mean, we've been. I mean, we've been told that uh, SAP is coming up with this uh, with this functionality. Uh, very soon and in, in the first quarter of 2020 so mm -hmm. i have no idea i mean i don't have much knowledge about ewm versions and all okay um, but basically it would be i think it would be an um, s4 ewm on premise mm -hmm. uh, license we're buying okay uh, i've been told that so far it's only one erp system connect connectivity is available in sap uh, but the, they told me that uh, they're coming back in april okay. i guess one second so one erp system in the sense the same let, let's take okay what do you mean to say that is uh, so this is a place where we will be assigning now for example you see that wm1 warehouse has been assigned to wm01 okay now in our case wm2 warehouse will be assigned to wm02 for example right why is this it is a one two. i'm sorry uh, the uh, see the warehouse number number WM one is the ERP, ERP number. Warehouse. Exactly. Yes. So in in my case, WM one mm. would be connecting to the uh, uh, EWM. Is that EWM? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can't read properly. Yep. This is the, the EWM, EWM number. Yeah. Okay. The fourth so, digit. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. So WM one would be connected to uh, EWM zero one, and WM two will all be connected to EWM zero one. So you mean to say that one ERP warehouse will be connected to a multiple no, two, ERP? Two, no, no. I, two two ERP warehouse are being connected to one EWM warehouse. Is it? That's correct. You're correct. Okay. Then that option is not available still. Then it's not available still. It's only a one-to-one -one relationship. As you said, it is okay. not introduced yet. Okay. okay. So yeah. as of now, I was thinking of a two different systems. I mean, like WM1 in one system and WM2 in another system, you can connect it to a single warehouse. No, so the two different case, clients. The two yeah, different the two clients. Different. No, in that let's case. Say my, is... Let's say my client has bought other client who is also an mm. uh, SAP. So mm -hmm. together, we're putting up a warehouse, EWM warehouse. So each will have, mm. we'll be accessing the same EWM client, but then two different mm -hmm. SAP systems. Then in that case, you can differentiate with the business system even because your business system would be different at that point of time, right? You can differentiate it with that particular thing, but ideally you said that you'll be accessing the same one. Same right? EWM client, yes. Yeah, that would not be a concern. You can have a different, but ideally I don't think it will work out because it is again, the main key field is about your ERP warehouse number here. That's one thing again. Okay. Yeah, that will not work at all, actually. And, and also the mapping, how does the mapping will work? Because the number range is one-to-one -one connection. Say like my one outbound delivery from ERP is coming as a one mm -hmm. uh, in uh, outbound delivery notification or, or, or delivery in EWM. So if two mm -hmm. are coming, then how the mapping will work? This kind of uh, uh, That's good. So that is oh. still that is that option itself is not there. Yeah, as of now, it's it's only a one-to-one -one relationship we have. That's what I'm telling you. Correct, correct. It's, it's yeah. like a... Uh, interesting to know like if we have that for functionality yeah because yes. sorry totally... I, I, didn't, I didn't understand i didn't understand no, you no, say like okay say like you are saying two erp system connected to one EWM uh, warehouse right that's, so if that's my correct. two 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 outbound delivery from two different systems two different warehouse are coming one is number one one is number two and then ewm what it will have the number what the outbound delivery number will be created because that number is one to one relationship 
Um, yes, but uh, the number ranges in EWM would be uh, different. The, I, I think I don't have knowledge about EWM, yes, but I'm assuming. It is, it is no, but it, it can is. only take one one warehouse only from ERP, not two, because how it will then accumulate? Like one and two, it will make as a what? Three, four, then then how that will in in the back? How you will trace it to ERP? Which system it is? Uh, which warehouse it is? Okay, uh, I, I have no knowledge about that. That's but what, that option is still not available, Anup and other people don't. Uh, yeah, no, no, exactly. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we've been, we've been told by, uh, we've been told by an uh, yes, SAP, yes. That was the SAP roadmap partner. which was given, but that was not yet released yet. I was thinking that two different ERP ones, but it's of, but here it's only a one ERP one. It's I mean, like same warehouse number, but a different client. But ideally that is not uh, possible at this stage. So if uh, uh, if I understand oh. you correctly, um, mm. if I create uh, uh, WM1, yes, warehouse in in two different uh, ERP systems, mm -hmm. and then connect it to one EWM, mm -hmm. will that work? Ideally, no, because the main key field will not make it work for us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll let okay. you know how it goes. But if you have okay. any information on that, can you please share it with me. Definitely, I'll have a look into that as well, and then I'll update you. Don't worry. But so, sorry, Shiram, this business system, if it is different, then it is it is letting that us is connect. What right? I was telling you, yeah. what I was, we can Correct. differentiate that with a business system because he, uh, client one can have BSG underscore one hundred, client two can Correct. have BSG underscore two hundred. Then that Correct. point of time. The WM1 can be there in one client and WM1 can be there in a second ah, client. Okay, okay. Right, okay. that can be done. But ideally, how it is possible that we have to practically check because even okay. till date we were only connecting with one ERP warehouse to one EWM warehouse number. Mm -hmm. But the same ERP warehouse number in multiple clients assigning it to a single EWM warehouse number, it's a different scenario again all, all over. Mm -hmm. So practically we have to see how practically it is possible. Let me even check from my end and then I'll update you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and this business system is nothing but the, the connecting to the same like S4 no, HANA no, system or different. something. This is something different. We have defined something called as a logical system, right? Logical. And this is something called as a business system. Business system is different, logical system is different. I'll explain you in the next session. Awesome. No problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Renam. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks, mate. Meet you in the next class.